friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hard brown cataract with general adhesions from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock 5 o'clock hours let us see management of this case after staining the capsule with tripe and blue dye the anti capsule is torn at the center with a needle with the 26 gauze pen needle and with the help of a uterata forceps, a small rexis is done, 4.5 millimeter rexis, because I have to use a capsule attention ring and if the rexis is large, the, it will be difficult to apply the capsule attention ring. Hydrodissection is done and then the capsular tension ring is applied with the help of a Macpherson's forceps and a tooth forceps. The capsular tension ring has been introduced from the main incision and as I come to the trailing end, I use a Macpherson's forceps and a Sinsky hook to place the CTR at the equator of the capsular bag. And now, two small stab incisions are made at 3.30 o'clock and 5 o'clock to apply two iris hooks. The capsular, capsular hooks will not go in. There is no space. Even I had to struggle a lot to apply these two iris hooks to hook the capsular margin. This will give vertical support. The capsular tension ring has given horizontal support. And now I check if there is any vitreous in the anterior chamber. At this time, it is not. There is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber at this time. Hydrodissection is done nicely, the nucleus rotated. Now the problem is, the cataract is very hard. There is five clock hours of general adhesions from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock and the rexis is small. I have to manage this case. I cannot use a high bottle height. Bottle height is only 50 centimeter in this case. Vacuum is only 150 millimeter of mercury. Ultrasonic power being used is about 80 percent. Flow rate, aspiration flow rate is 25 ml per minute and I am trying to manage this hard nucleus with this very low parameters. I tried to crack the nucleus and I got a very small crack, rotated the nucleus. My plan is to make as many cracks as possible so that I will get smaller pieces which will be which I will be able to emulsify and take out. At this time I can see vitreous prolapsing through the side port. Since there is no vitreous where I am working with the FECO handpiece, since there is no vitreous in the capsular bag, I am continuing with the management of the nucleus. If I trim this vitreous, some more vitreous will come out. So I continued with management of the nucleus, making as many cracks as possible 
and finally I increased the vacuum to about 200. Flow rate was increased to about 30 and I could manage the nucleus with this little higher setting. This surgery took very long time. The surgery is being shown uh, at 1.5 times speed. So, it is going to take a long time and you have to have patience to watch this surgery. This surgery took about 40 minutes and it has been edited to about 14 minutes. So, management of this nucleus is going on. This patient has history of trauma. This is history of blunt trauma. In traumatic genular dehiscence, the, we can manage with capsular tension ring because there is less chance of I will back complex drop in traumatic cataracts because the remaining genule is quite healthy. They will keep the bag in place. And now we are towards the end of the management of nucleus. Now the problem is when the, there is genular dehiscence, the posterior capsule may come very easily to the tip and uh, my plan is to keep an epinuclear shell as a protector of the capsule. I want to remove only the hard part and then implant the intraocular lens. Over the intraocular lens I want to remove this epinuclear shell. So here I stop, I come out and inject 2% HPMC. You can see the bag intact and now I implant a monofocal single piece intraocular lens in the capsular bag. The lens easily goes in the capsular bag because the size of the rexis is about only about 4.5 millimeter. And now I take the FACO needle again and emulsify this epinucleus over the intraocular lens. Thus, we have been able to protect the posterior capsule. And now there are some cortex. I'm going to remove that cortex with the help of this Simco cannula. I could remove most of the cortex. But there is some lens matter, a chunk of epinucleus just under the main incision. To get that chunk of epinucleus, I rotate the lens. so that the haptic is away from that chunk and the chunk of epinucleus is easily removed. At this time I could see some vitreous strand coming to the port so I immediately I use reflux and come out. Inject some tramsinolone acetate, inject a bit of HPMC, make a side port at around 8 o'clock and then I use the vitrectomy cutter 
to remove the vitreous strands from the anterior chamber. Lot of vitreous has come out through the sideboard at 2 o'clock. So, I, my plan is to remove that, trimming that area, but we will find later that this time most of the vitreous was not removed from the 2 o'clock sideboard. I removed on iris hook and now here I can see a lot of vitreous, yes a lot of vitreous was there incarcerated in the 2 o'clock sideboard. Now I use the cutter and remove these vitreous strands. And now, I inject air and pilocarpin. Intracameral preparation of pilocarpin is pilocarpin 1 percent. In India, we get this preparation from Sunways. I do not know any other company produces this product. I have no financial interest but this information may help you. Intracameral preparation of pilocarpin 1 percent. Now, this is the at this time also some more vitreous came to the main wound. You can see there is a big gap. So, what I do is I inject some more trams known and check with the Simco and I find a lot of visco there. Without irrigation, I removed this vitreous. If I use irrigation, more vitreous will come. So, at this time I did not use much of irrigation. The side ports were closed by hydrating corneal stroma and then this is the final formation of the anterior chamber. You can see the intraocular lens nicely centered, people is round, integrity of all the wounds are checked few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Now, let us see some post-op pictures taken 15 hours after surgery. The surgery was started at 4 o'clock yesterday, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and post-op pictures have been taken today at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, 15 hours after surgery, we see these post-op pictures. Cornea is absolutely clear, crystal clear, there is no corneal edema anywhere. Antichamber is quiet, people is round and central and visual acuity is 6 by 12 unaided. Patient is very happy and I am also very happy because I had to, I had to fail, face several challenges in this case and I had to overcome them taking almost 40 minutes time. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical skills. Wish not it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenges. Wish for more wisdom.